Namaste, friends. Welcome, everyone. Uh, my question is, where does this law of attraction fits? Law of attraction is nothing but law of karma. See, law, whether it is law of attraction or law of resonance, law of karma, it's all the same. Okay, whatever the frequency, you attract the same. Law of resonance. That's law of karma. So can we alter the uh, karma through law of attraction? The, the both are the same. That's what I'm saying. Okay. They both are absolutely the same. But yes, you have the free will. You have the free will. You change your inner frequency, the outer changes. You change the inner, then the outer changes. The outer is the manifestation of your inner. You change your thoughts, you change your feelings, then the outer is different. You can try this experiment. You know, try this simple experiment. Right? You feel so negative, agitated, and you feel there is great injustice and you know why this is so much is happening. Afghanistan, Kabul, Taliban, and uh, you know so much of violence. And you read newspaper. The morning when you read newspaper, there is so much negativity. And these news channels, they know perfect marketing. You know they focus on the negative news because it's the negativity which people get attracted mostly. So that's why you see the newspaper. There are very few uh, positive things they will write that too in the last page or in the middle page, but the headlines will be all negative news only, because people so are so much negative on the planet Earth right now. So much people are negative, so they get attracted to the negative news. And the more they are negative, they vibrate the negative things, and they go through the negative things in life. So they are stuck in the loop. So I want you to do this experiment. Whenever you are feeling negative, you notice that. You will you will attract more negativity, okay. But immediately you change that feeling. You know you sit in meditation whenever you are feeling agitated or disturbed. You just sit in meditation and change that feeling inside you. You change that feeling. No, everything is beautiful, and I am going to change my feeling. I am going to feel the vastness. I am going to feel my own beauty. I am going to feel the beauty of nature. I am going to feel the abundance. I am going to feel the love of the Creator, the God. So you change the feeling. Just do this exercise for five minutes. Sit in meditation. Observe. Be with the breath. Empty the mind, and change your feeling consciously. And then you notice. You notice what you what happens in on that particular day. You notice what happens. Immediately things will change. Or you do another experiment. Somebody is coming and shouting at you and is very agitated. Just change your. Don't react to that. And just change your inner feeling and. Have a smile and say thank you very much and hug him. The moment he is scolding you, but you go and hug him, immediately he will change. He is no more the same person. So your inner transforms. Inner is the inner is the cause. The effect is the outer. So you can do all these multiple experiments and uh, see. The more you understand the law, the more you get the benefit out of it. So your effort is to understand. So through these experiments, you will understand. I think it comes the more meditation we do. Naturally, you need more meditation, sir. You need you see first of all to realize that you are into that negative vibration. You need awareness, right? So you need more and more meditation to be aware of your what what is your feeling because most of the people they are unconscious. They are not even conscious that they are they are having negative thoughts. They are very unconscious. So you need a lot of meditation to be even to be aware that you are. Having the negative feelings and negative thoughts. What is third eye perfection? Okay, so when you are meditating, when you start meditation, the first step is you will notice a lot of thoughts, right? So you are aware of your thoughts and you are aware of your breath. And with more regular practice and practice of meditation, then your thoughts subside, your thoughts reduce, and then you will. Notice a lot. Your etheric body is going through the cleansing process. That is the the second stage where you are going through a lot of body pains and a lot of uh, disturbances in your meditation. So that is nothing but the healing process. And after that, your third eye activation will happen. Third eye activation is you are feeling some itching sensation here. You see some lights. You see some colors. You know all this in between the uh, eyebrows. So this is where the sixth chakra, the third eye is. So you will notice a lot of uh, this tingling sensations. This is nothing but third eye activation, and uh, then slowly, slowly you continue meditation, continue meditation with more and more cosmic energy. Uh, then the visions will become clear. Before that, it was the visions were a little blurred, 
you know you will see somebody but the, the clarity is not there it is the images are blurred so with more and more meditation then the images become clear more clear so you're able to see your certain things you're able to see the other realities other frequencies okay so this is the third eye activation stage but third eye perfection means you are able to see those visions or perceive those visions or audios like you no know, clear audience inner voice or feelings or smell whatever you are able to perceive it and you are trying to learn let some uh, lessons out of it you are not just seeing it but you are learning something out of it so when you have when you develop the ability to learn truth using your third eye that is third eye perfection so third eye perfection is uh, your capacity to learn the lessons or to understand the bigger picture of life okay some people they see visions okay i have seen this color i have seen this star system i have seen uh, this master i have seen baba ji i have seen this angel okay you are seen so what you have seen that means your third eye got activated so what it's of no use you have seen something so what is the use no use you just it, it's more of your spiritual ego yes i saw that i see this you know i saw the angels you know i have the connection to baba ji i have the connection to star beings i have the connection to angels it just satisfies your spiritual ego but no use but third eye perfection means you okay you you meet baba ji and then you you question hey why did you come in my meditation what is the message you are going to give me why did you come into my meditation in the first place what is the message so you listen to the message and also you don't blindly believe the message you decode the message whether the message makes sense or not whether is really a baba ji or some low frequency being coming as a disguise so you perfect your third eye and you use lot of discernment and you are not blindly believing uh, anything whatever you are seeing you are going deep into it and you are discerning it so and through the discernment you learn the lessons so that is third eye perfection for example you yeah, again you see your past life in the third eye you can able to see your past life also just seeing the past life is of no use but you see the past life and you learn what mistake i did in that past life what lesson i missed it what lesson i learned what lesson i missed and what lesson i'm repeating what mistake i'm repeating so you learn that lesson from that past life that is third eye perfection so third eye perfection is all about using your third eye for your spiritual evolution for your spiritual progress and being in balance and not feeling special when you don't feel special when you are absolutely grounded balanced and then you are using that experiences for your spiritual growth that is third eye perfection and third eye perfection is the final stage what's the difference between star seeds star beings and light workers all are the same different words we, we are all star seeds we are all star beings we don't belong to the earth we come from another dimension and we are all light workers so all are the same different expression i have a fear of uh, like speaking when there are quite a lot of big group or it like a seminar i would appreciate if you could just let me know how to overcome this type of fears so first of all you have to understand that all the fears are there because of your uh, ignorance or because of your karma or because of the wrong understanding of life so fundamentally if you ask all fears are there because of karma so how do you come out of the fears face the fears the more and more you face the fears the more you understand that actually there is no such thing like fear fear is in your mind but fear is not outside there so fear is an illusion you have created it so the more and more you face the fears the more you understand actually it is an illusion it is not real it appears to be real but it is not real so the more and more you face the fears the the illusion bubble burst out so that's the only way face your fears okay okay face okay. Fears. thank you in, in spite of the fears face the fears thanks for learning and uh, this is something very important all the western countries especially australia europe cold countries new zealand canada america we have the habit of cooking the food and keeping in the freezer for yeah, that's so much tamasic food and you have experimented and you have shared that thank you very much should always eat and fresh thank you
I have a question on the marriage life. The partners in the marriage are likely to be in different stages of their soul journey. Because of that, will there be conflicts? If so, what is what will be their solution? Okay. So since today we speak, we spoke about uh, law of karma. You'll be surprised. Ninety-five uh, percent uh, of the marriages they are karmic. So. in the soul planning stage how it happens right so two individuals individually we have karmas but we have karmas with other people also right we do bad things to others and they do bad thing to others so if two people have too much bad karma too much baggage between them during their soul design stage the spirit guides will explain them you see you have so much karmic baggage so you have a choice you can take 20 lifetimes to neutralize that karma between you two so you two take 20 lifetimes together as colleagues or as friends as brothers and sisters or whatever you take 20 lifetimes so that the karma will be neutralized or there is another option you come as husband wife in one lifetime it will be neutralized so all the marriages 95% of the marriages are karmic and that's a very intense karmic relationship the marriage relationship especially the husband wife relationship or a boyfriend girlfriend anything two individuals coming together very intimately it's a karmic relationship and that relationship is not a punishment that relationship is very beautiful from the soul perspective it is very beautiful because it's an opportunity to learn a lot of lessons so in a shortest period of time quickly we choose our partners and uh, our partners will trouble naturally the husband will trouble the wife the wife will trouble the husband that is a very natural phenomena and through the trouble they grow but how do you come out of it how do you make sure you don't get the same wife again if that is your question then you have to make peace with your wife that is the answer you should not blame anything don't blame anything on your partner just accept yes she is my she is helping me to grow so all the time without any blame game just look into what lessons i should learn forgiveness acceptance these are all great lessons we can learn from the partners so how how do the marriages break break up then we have free will also right we have destiny and we have free will also you can use your free will to divorce just because you are breaking up the marriage doesn't mean your karma is finished again the next lifetime you will come again as husband wife oh. so better to face it rather than going for divorce when if the karma ends between two people if the karma there is no more karmic baggage between the couple then uh, then you might ask then how then still they should be husband wife they have a choice if the karma is finished between those two people they become good friends so it is their choice to continue or not but there won't be any negative feelings that is the most important thing if you don't have any negativity towards your partner no negative feelings no negative thoughts no feeling of oh she troubled me she tortured me i went through these i went through that you don't have any negative feeling and you have only pure gratitude and you have a beautiful friendship that means your karma has neutralized between the couple so until you take the relationship to the friend level of friendship the karma exists uh, whenever i used to listen um, Go, uh, some appreciation from uh, others means i used to feel lot of tears from my eyes sir what might be the reason sir because you never appreciated yourself that's why when somebody else appreciates you get tears okay. because of the lack of self appreciation okay so when you appreciate yourself when you accept yourself when you accept yourself when you appreciate yourself when you love yourself you are complete you don't need others appreciation in the first place okay sir okay so focus on self acceptance and self appreciation learning is on one level integrating what we learned in our day to day life is on another level okay you might read 10000 books you might attend many many workshops uh, you might uh, theoretically you might learn many things but if you have not implemented in your life if you have not integrated in your life then whatever you learned has no meaning so integration is transformation so in this self transformation program we focus on experimenting and integrating so thank you very much for sharing um i want to know what is the difference between inner child and higher self okay 
So your higher self is nothing but all your subtle bodies put together. Okay. So as I told you yesterday, only a small portion of the soul energy comes and incarnates in the human. So the remaining portion remains in the higher worlds. So we are a triunion self. Our self, our soul is a triunion, right? Like a doer, knower, thinker, like right? doer, thinker, knower. All those three put together is our self. So the doer self incarnates on the planet Earth. These are these three are inseparable. But just for the understanding, I'm giving you as three parts. One is the doer, and the other is the thinker, and the other is the knower. So the doer parts incarnate into the human, and the doer has the ego. Right. And the thinker part and the knower part, they remain in the higher worlds because all the lifetimes experiences, the wisdom is in the thinker self. So you use your intuition or you use your discernment, whether it, this is right or that is right, based on your experiences, you are learning from the past lives. So that is from the thinker self. And the knower self knows that you are complete by yourself. You are God. The knower self knows that you are an eternal being. Right? So in meditation, but this doer self, when the doer self incarnates, it comes into the field of duality on the planet Earth. It feels it is all alone. After incarnating, it feels it's all alone and there is separation. So the more and more a person does meditation, the more and more his mind is becoming empty. So when his mind is becoming empty, what is ego? Ego is fundamentally what you feel about yourself. Right? What you feel about yourself is your ego. Okay, I am this, I am that, right? I am a male, I am a female, I am a doctor, I am an engineer, I am a mother, I am a daughter, I am this, I am intelligent, I am smart. So whatever you feel about yourself is nothing but your ego. So that is the I, I. So in meditation, as you are emptying your thoughts, all your thoughts and feelings are blank. You go into a very empty space. In that empty space, you are in connection with your thinker self and the knower self. So that's when you get the guidance, right? The more you do meditation, the more you get the guidance. So that is the higher self. So this thinker self and the knower self, people refer to as higher self. But in simple terms, all your subtle bodies is nothing but your, your physical body is what you feel it as you. But your subtle bodies are all your higher self, like your, your astral body, your uh, mental body, your causal body, your supra-causal body. All these bodies are all your higher self. Okay. So, and uh, the other question you asked is the inner child. So, your inner child is nothing but your uh, feelings, your inner wounds, your feelings. That is what you feel. Inner child is, inner child is more of what you feel about you, what you feel about you, what are the traumas you have experienced and what is your subconscious memories, all those things collectively is part of your inner child. So you imagine yourself as an adult and the inside voice, the inside feelings is nothing but your inner child. But when you come into the meditative path, you are no more an inner child, you are your higher self. So non-meditators speak the term inner child. Meditators speak the term higher self. Okay. So you might have heard of uh, inner child healing. Right? Inner child healing. So what is inner child healing? Inner child healing means reprogramming. You would have had a lot of programming. Programming of traumas. Programming of certain beliefs. So this programming is inside you. From your this pro Where did this programming come from? From outside. This programming comes from the outside. And because of this programming, you go through a certain trauma. And that becomes your memory. And because of that memory, you act in a certain way, you speak in a certain way, you think in a certain way. Right? So the outer circumstances creates an inner programming, which we refer to as inner child or subconscious. But the higher self is the guidance which you receive when you go into meditation. When you empty the mind, you have the higher guidance. So it is the energy of the higher self it is the wisdom of the higher self. It is the knowing from the higher self which will heal your inner child. 
i want more progress i want to be connected so that i could attend more sessions and improve myself i have no grudges from my guru and uh, he also has given me a lot of patience and but only thing was the meditation where i was finding that i am not uh, doing anything but now i can sit i can sit without any thoughts and i have seen many visions i you said that uh, this is third eye opening that i don't know but i have seen very clear Im- uh, images um i don't know whether these were the past life uh, scenes or whatever whatever it is but i'm flying uh, i i don't know where where i'm going it is it is a village then green tree then flowers then clouds like this i had seen so maybe i am evolving in this please guide me and so that i could become a even more better person yes enjoy your all your visions madam enjoy all your experiences like you know you watch a movie you go you watch a movie enjoy the movie so whatever is your meditation experiences enjoy it yeah. but don't be identified with it just enjoy it once the movie finished you come back to your yeah there is nothing special about it there is nothing great about it and uh, whatever the experiences you have enjoy the experiences and come back to the breath that is number one and number two um guru you spoke about uh, you know i have no grudges with my past mm-hmm. or anything you see you have to understand the word guru guru the word guru is the most misunderstood actually yeah. the word guru comes from guri okay mm-hmm. so the person with guri is a guru guri means what is guri guri means focus guri means sincerity okay yeah. a person with great sincerity with deep focus with great sincerity is a guru yes the opposite word of a guru is lagu a guru is a is a person with with heavy you know his his sincerity is heavy his intent is heavy his knowledge is heavy his wisdom is heavy lagu is lightweight yeah okay so opposite of guru is lagu a person without any sincerity Yeah. withering here and there is lagu so your own sincerity is your guru your intent is your guru your sincerity is your guru so that's why we say uh, guru brahma guru vishnu yeah guru maheshwara right so brahma brahma means creation yes without without guru there is no creation what is guru again sincerity so if you are not sincere can you create anything no you want to learn music yeah without sincerity can you learn this no you want to earn money anything whether it is money meditation music material spiritual doesn't matter anything you want in life if you are not sincere you cannot have it you cannot create it yeah. absolutely you cannot create anything if you are not sincere so guru brahma means without guru there is no creation that means without your own guri without your own sincerity you cannot create anything Yeah. Okay. okay and guru vishnu vishnu is the one who sustains the creation so you learnt music but just by learning the initial sarigama it's not music you have to progress you have to sustain what you have learnt you have go to the you have to uh, learn lot of thalas and lot of other things layas rhythms so you have to sustain what you have created so again without sincerity the continuation of the practice will not be there mm-hmm. without yes. sincerity the continuation will not be there without efforts you cannot sustain the beauty of your creation guru maheshwara is reaching the peaks the pinnacles again for that you need sincerity without sincerity you cannot reach the peaks and the pinnacles so your sincerity should be there in the beginning stage and in the middle stage and also in the final stage of your own creation so any person with sincerity is a guru so that's why in psm we say you are your own guru okay nobody else can be your guru nobody can bless you that is the fact i cannot bless you no way i am i am a teacher i am acharya a person who has knowledge who can able to teach is an acharya is a teacher not a guru guru is sincerity your own sincerity is your guru if you are not sincere 
So you, you imagine, you just imagine you are not sincere. Then the greatest of the greatest teacher also cannot teach you. See, Duryodhana don't have the sincerity to learn from Krishna. Krishna, the great enlightened master, cannot yeah. teach, cannot even convince Duryodhana. If you have sincerity, if you have the guri, if you have the sincerity, then you can learn even from a bad teacher. And you can learn great things from a good teacher. If you don't have sincerity, you cannot even learn from the greatest of the greatest teacher. So, your guri, your sincerity is your guru. That is the truth. So, don't say that my guru, this, that. No, okay. your guru okay. is your sincerity. Okay. okay. It's your, it's your sincerity which will help you in your progress. Because of your own sincerity. See, there is a saying that the Guru is the one who takes you from the darkness to the light. Yes? Guru is the one who takes you from darkness to the light. Yes. Guru Shakshat Parabrahma. Mm -hmm. Parabrahma means the ultimate creation. If you want to go to the experience, the ultimate source, it is the Guru. So the enlightenment is possible only if you are sincere. If you are not sincere, nothing is possible. Okay. So your sincerity is the root of whatever you do in your life. Anything you do in your life, if you want to earn money, if you are not sincere, you cannot earn. You want name and fame. If you are not sincere, you cannot get name and fame. You know, you want peace, happiness. If you are not sincere towards your own peace and happiness, you will not get it. Okay. If you want enlightenment, if you are not sincere, you will not get it. So everything, the root is the guru, is guri. The, the guru is a word which comes from the guri. A person who has a guri is a guru, which is sincerity. Yeah, got it. Yes, madam. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Yes. And uh, you should... You should also replace the word okay. uh, teacher with expert. Then there is no attachment to the teacher also. Okay, so we learn from many, many people. So replace the word. So for example, you now we have the tendency to say, oh, I learned from that guru. Right? Yeah. We have the tendency, I learned from this guru. Yeah. They just replace the word guru with expert. Okay, you go to a mathematics expert to learn mathematics. You learn, you go to a chemistry expert to learn chemistry. So you go to a meditation expert to learn meditation. So just replace the word expert. Then that becomes more simple. Okay. And the attachment is now more there. Yeah. Thank you so much. Because one of the final, one of the final lessons in the spiritual evolution is to let go of the attachment of the teacher also. Yeah. One, one thing I must endorse is uh, all these years, I have been questioning when people were guiding with a lot of visualization and very senior masters were doing and it, it was my inside which was not accepting it and when you explained it that uh, this is not the real you know using mind in any process of meditation is not right and, and that's my 25 years old learning uh, some couple of questions like which uh, which relate to some actions which i should take up uh, one thing uh, bothers me a lot is the in this universe all craving and craving for money and accumulation which is growing. While in spiritual discourses, many places I find people talk about manifesting what you want. Like your house, your car, your wife, your money and all, all those things. So there I get confused and I ask them and they say, no, it's your free will and your soul might have planned it and so you should not be averse about it, and so there is some confusion there. What uh, is the what is the confusion, sir? Why people uh, come into meditation and go for uh, manifestation of the house and other things? Yeah, I mean, uh, when such programs are happening, and then they talk about that you can manifest this, and very very seen that as is marketing, master, sir. That is marketing. Okay. Oh, and, and very, very senior people, very renowned, respected people coming to the, our and big See, you have, to, you have to understand yes. that, you see, Buddha had a palace. He was yes. a born a prince. He had everything at his disposal. Because he had everything at his disposal, but he wanted to know why there is suffering, why there is dukkha. So that was his search. So he left everything 
because he know what money can give he know what pleasures and what the materialistic things can give he perfectly knows that he perfectly knows that that cannot give him any answers that cannot give him any peace that cannot give him any con uh, contentment so he left it and he went and he got what he want those category of the people they are only 5% there are only 5% of the people who come i am saying if there are 100% of the people who come into meditation who come into the spiritual path so those who are only 5% of the people like a mahavir like a buddha right where they have everything in life they are already happy but they are looking for something eternal something bigger which the materialistic things cannot give so these people they are very sincere people and for them it's a do or die and they become great teachers they become very great teachers and they become very great inspiration the rest of the 95% of the people who come into the spiritual path they come because they are not happy in their life because they have some physical problems some health problems some emotional problems some relationship issues some financial problems or they have low self esteem and they are feeling so much void inside them they cannot find meaning to their life they feel useless and they they are pretty much a kind of they consider themselves a failure so they are looking for some answers and they come into the meditation and when they come into the meditation they practice meditation of course everybody who come they are sincere only they are sincere they are sincere towards what their goal see the goal of the 5% people is enlightenment so the goal of the rest of the 95% of the people is they want to come out of that suffering that's all they want to come out of that problems in life they want to be happy in life so these people when they come into meditation sooner or later with the energy they get what they want right they are naturally the feeling of low self esteem and uh, all those things naturally the relationship the emotions they will understand that and few workshops that and the classes they get what they want and the moment they get what they want they forget why they are meditating in the first place they forget about enlightenment so they are stuck in that so they are stuck in that name and fame the people who are feeling very low self esteem after they come into the meditation then they are stuck in the name and fame and on this spiritual platform provides them all the name and fame you know they call them great masters senior masters respectful masters so this name and fame uh, is which is trapping them and also for the people who were always behind materialistic things who couldn't manifest materialistic things before who are not satisfied with all the materialistic things because in their past lives maybe they have gone through a lot of uh, suffering physical sufferings materialistic uh, lack poverty so they want to experience all those things so they are stuck in that area so whatever they are lacking they will get stuck in that area so but if your focus if your sincerity is towards enlightenment then nobody can stop you but all, you have to understand all kinds of people exist just because somebody calls themselves a meditator doesn't mean they are looking for enlightenment okay out of the 100 people who come into meditation only 10 people will be successful i'm just giving uh, an average formula out of the 100 people who come into meditation only 10 people become meditators that means only out of the 100 only 10% make a sincere effort and this 10% will empty the mind and become a meditator out of the 10 people only one will get enlightened the rest will get dropped somewhere in the line either because of money name and fame or attraction towards opposite sex these three things will be a stumbling block out of the 10 nine will fall into this pit and only one will reach the pinnacle one will get enlightened so that is the formula only 1% so can you imagine how much sincerity you need to reach that one so your sincerity is your sincerity determines where you are reaching and what is your journey and what are you looking for everything is determined by your sincerity that's why i say you are your own guru you create your own reality you create your own reality based on your thoughts feelings and your words and your actions so what kind of thoughts you have what kind of vision you have what kind of feelings you have so that determines your 
creation. We create our own reality. If your thoughts are towards living a comfortable life, towards manifesting property, you will manifest that. But then you will forget about enlightenment. We create our own reality, sir. See, I am not against materialistic comforts. But what is your focus? That you should be clear. There should be clarity in what you want. But you might ask the question, then why are so? Why are the masters, some senior masters, they are uh, using this manifestation and uh, all those things? That is just marketing, sir. If you say I am teaching meditation, nobody will come. Everybody is teaching meditation, so they need their own uh, tool, marketing tool, unique selling point to attract the people. So they say, okay, you come to me, your relationships will be beautiful. You come to me, I will help you manifest anything you want. You come to me, you will be happy in your life. So these are all marketing tools. There is nothing wrong with them. But that is how. That is what the people are. Unless there is marketing, people are not coming to meditation. Unless people come into meditation, they are not becoming vegetarian. So the minimum agenda is people should become vegetarian. That is the minimum agenda. So for that agenda, all kinds of marketing has been used. Can you explain us the different stages of evolution of a soul from infant, baby? What I'm asking is when I analyze, uh, I must not analyze, but when I try to understand where I am. So on certain points, I find I'm a little mature or old soul. But at other some some points, I find I'm still like I may be infant or young or. Something. Since you have gone through that evolution, you might have qualities. I have all the qualities of all the souls, but which is your dominant quality? Which is your dominant quality? What is that you are looking for in life? That determines your soul evolution. If you are looking for serving the people and just you know want to do good things i want to serve the people i know i want to be good in painting arts sports then you are a mature soul if you are a kind of person you want to know the meaning of life you want to understand the bigger picture right making you want to see what is what is the purpose of my life what is the meaning of my life what is the bigger picture if if you have that kind of desires then you are in the beginning of the old soul when you are actually making an effort to you are no more theoretical interested you are you want to experience the truth okay you are no more theoretical interested you want to experience the truth no theory no books no knowledge nothing you are interested you want to experience and you are doing meditation 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 your whole life you are dedicated to meditation towards that experience then you are a transcendental soul you are towards the end of the old soul end of the old soul and beginning of the transcendental soul when you actually experience the truth when you actually experience that you are not the body you are not the mind you are a pure consciousness when you actually experience it practically in your own meditation then you are called a transcendental soul and after you have experienced the truth you become a teacher of what you have experienced see this is the interesting thing once you know the truth you are you become very unsettled once you experience the truth you become very disturbed and unsettled because you cannot see your brothers and sisters suffering you want to do something so you want to teach so you become a teacher of your own experience when you become a teacher of your own enlightenment then you are an infinite soul so all soul transcendental soul and then infinite soul and there is a gray area between between the stages there there is a gray area so you can say sir in this lifetime i don't have any experience but i know what is the truth and i have the feeling that i have to teach also i am meditating but i have no experience but i know the truth but i feel like teaching so that means your experience has already happened in your past life now we have to teach you are saying is i am finding myself in the mix somewhere i have had the experience but it doesn't come back in like you know that the extreme experiences also i have had uh, see but, uh, um, i have to you know, i can't draw the expectation probably that's the thing or the mind uh, yes yeah, the mind is very cunning right mind is very cunning the very nature of the mind is it creates expectations that's why it is important you always go with your feelings how do you feel right what actions you do makes you feel good and happy go with that that determines your stage of evolution don't go with the mind go with the feelings you see i from the day one i felt like i need to teach from the day one see in this lifetime and i didn't have any experience in this lifetime i didn't have any meditational experience zero meditational experience in this lifetime 
But the moment I started meditating, within a week, my whole life transformed. Within a week, my whole life transformed. My approach, my consciousness, everything shifted within one week. But that is a practical experience I got. I didn't have astral travel. I didn't have third eye experiences. But I had practical experience where my life shifted, my consciousness shifted, my attitude shifted, my approach towards life shifted within one week of meditation. So within that one week of meditation, I realized my life purpose is to help other people who are like me, who are struggling to know the meaning of life. So unless I do that, I was also a software engineer working in Australia. So I was getting a good salary and uh, I'm in a very uh, safe and secure environment, settled in life, but that is not giving me joy. What is giving me joy is to leave my comfort zone and to go and teach and when I meet the people, when I teach meditation, that gives me joy. So I have to follow my feelings. I have to follow what gives me joy. So you follow what gives you joy. Don't take others' opinion to do certain things. No, follow your feelings. What makes you joyful, you do that. And in whatever the level you are, you are perfect. An infinite soul is no greater than old soul. An old soul is no greater than a baby soul. Everybody is great in their level. So live a happy, contented life by doing what you feel like doing. That is the most important. When you start following your heart, then all the expectations drop. You are least bothered about the expectations. In PMC Mumbai, uh, certain spiritual masters uh, suggest that at the end of the meditation, uh, that uh, you express your gratitude to Mother Earth, to nature, to plants, animals, and to your parents. Now, the question is, my parents have left me. Now, if I express gratitude, uh, will it reach to them or it is just for my satisfaction? Okay. So, gratitude is a very great feeling. Which will um, Gratitude is a feeling which will expand your heart vibrations, right? So, it is not necessary that you express gratitude after meditation. It is not necessary. But gratitude, feeling gratitude should be the way of your life. Not only after meditation. You should feel gratitude all the time. That should be a way of life. That should be a part of life. That okay. was the end of meditation before it uh, ends. Even uh, before our talking... end, even before end doesn't matter. Okay. okay, so it is unfortunate we are having Mother's Day, Father's Day. Where on that particular day we remember our mother, particular day we remember our father. It's an unfortunate uh, Western concept. We are always gratitude. We feel uh, we, are we are grateful to our parents all the time. We are grateful to the Mother Earth all the time. We are grateful to all our teachers all the time. So that is part of us. That should be the way. Okay. So that feeling of gratitude should be our way of life. Not See, if, if you are not feeling well, right? If you are feeling little wacky, you know, if you are feeling little uncomfortable, you are feeling very low. So that time you can invoke that gratitude. You can invoke that gratitude so that you feel good, so that your feelings are positive. So that technique of invoking the gratitude, when you're, whenever you are feeling low, yes, it is good. But it is not necessary. You need to voluntarily invoke the gratitude uh, every moment after, uh, every time after doing meditation. It is not necessary. But there is no harm in doing that also. The soul which takes birth, if we speak something good of them or uh, we try to value them through our thoughts uh, through and by expressing it in words, does it reach that soul? The vibration reaches the soul because it has taken birth, it has, it has entered a body. It depends on how connected you are to that soul and it depends on how evolved the soul is. So just because you send some uh, vicious greetings, it doesn't mean it is going to reach there. It, it depends on many, many factors. It depends on the energy of the transmitter. It depends on the intention of the transmitter. It depends on the capacity of the receiver. It depends on the evolution of the receiver and the energy of the receiver. There are so many things. It, uh, it's a very, uh, it depends on many factors. So I'll give you an example. Um, your question, I think, is precisely more about uh, we in some traditions they pray to the departed ones you know they send some wishes they do some rituals to that my relatives ask me that the soul has taken birth 
so what mm. is the use of uh, uh, sending messages it will not reach it has taken birth yeah. so, yes naturally suppose if the soul is a uh, mature soul it will not look back it will happily go to the astral worlds and it will focus on its own evolution and whatever you do is a completely waste of time and waste of energy suppose a soul is a earth bound soul right suppose the soul is a low frequency being and not mature and so attached to the family so attached to the children to the parents to the property to the name fame the soul is lived a completely materialistic life and when the soul leaves when you keep on remembering them then the soul is still hanging over here the soul doesn't want to go to the higher worlds you do the rituals you do the prayers and you say you are our savior you have to protect our family you do all those the request you give all those request and prayers then the soul is uh, stuck in between you know if the soul is neither in the physical nor in the astral it is in between the soul is stuck there so you are doing more harm than good to that soul now we pray to our parents for blessings and all and no 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 sure. prayer madam just now i said your sincerity yeah. is your blessing your sincerity is your, or your guru and no blessing business good wishes yeah. you can send not blessing That, that doesn't exist no see good wishes good wishes always exist you can always send good wishes right okay but just because you send the good wishes it doesn't mean it will reach it depends on the person who is sending how much energy you have what energy you have do you have the capacity to send the good wishes to the other dimensions the higher can help the lower the lower can never help the higher but of course you can send good wishes within the same within the planet earth you can always send good wishes to each other who are alive good wishes are always possible but blessings no but some people confuse good wishes for blessings that is a problem you should always have good wishes that is a must you should always have good wishes for everybody you should wish well for everybody okay when you wish when you wish well the feeling that you want everybody to be happy that is a feeling you know you want everybody to be happy so that will come back to you so you feel good so you will manifest lot of peace in your life so remember this point you should always send good wishes to everybody on the planet earth but sending good wishes to the departed ones doesn't work because the lower physical is the lower astral is the higher so the lower cannot help the higher but the higher can help the lower so no need to pray to them also no in times of trial Suffering, am, no need then. No need. That's okay. what I wanted to know. It was a niggling one. So thank you for clearing it. So we will take questions tomorrow, and we'll go with the final integration tomorrow. And uh, thank you very much for all your feedback and expression. And once again, it is your sincerity, it is your experiments, it is your practice which has helped you. to realize certain things thank you very much friends we'll see you again tomorrow namaste to everyone